Good afternoon. It is my distinct pleasure to welcome you both, our online and in-person attendees, and our presenters, to the second day of our 14th annual Archaeology Weekend. I'm enjoying this year's focus on glory, grit, and grandeur of the pharaohs of ancient Egypt. Yesterday, our presenters gave fascinating lectures on inventing the pyramids, Akhenaten and the origins of monotheism, and King Tut, the boy who changed the world twice when he was alive and 3,500 years later. As I listened, I was reminded of my own interactions with archaeology. The truth is, I wanted to be an archaeologist when I was growing up. Well, among a lot of other things, I suppose, like an astronomer, a few things like that. Um, but, but what I really wanted to do was to discover the past. I wanted to know what was behind the fascinating stories of history. How could you know if some of what we considered myth or fable really happened? How could you know if some of what we considered this stories uh, would have really occurred when I heard the stories of uh, Heinrich Schliemann's search for the ancient city of Troy? What if we could find evidence that Troy had existed? Maybe the story of the Trojan horse was based on some truth? That was exciting to me. What if we could find evidence of many other stories of the past? Stories of Atlantis, for example. I grew up in a very lo old log house, now on the state of Tennessee Register of Historical Homes, and I constantly wondered what had happened there before me. What was the story behind the spring underneath the bluff, and who built the stone seats around it? How long ago? What were the stories behind the arrows I found after my father plowed a field on our farm? Another fascinating discovery for me was um, who hung the horseshoe on a branch of a tree that later grew around it, embedding it into the tree, holding it there for me to find maybe 200 years later. By the time I was in my 20s, the popular movies like Raiders of the Lost Ark renewed my fascination with archaeology. I had gone on to study history in college, so no, not archaeology, but when I had the chance to go with a group from Andrews to Amman, Jordan, to Tal Hashban in 2001, I jumped at the chance. I, I talked about this a little bit last night at the reception, but uh, I really enjoyed tagging along with those who were mapping a cave that had a stone structure inside, a wall of some sort. Who built that wall? What were they feeling when they made that storage room or or animal enclosure. Who held the beautiful clay lamp we found in perfect condition? Later, when I began to research into the interactions of the Cherokee people with the Tennessee River where I grew up, I studied artifacts and etchings on stone, perhaps telling ancient stories we are yet to fully decipher. When teaching some pre-Civil War American history courses, the students and I examined floor plans of manor houses that told a story of gendered spaces, among other things. Teaching graduate students to use material culture to broaden our understanding of the past again reminded me of my love of archaeology, uncovering forgotten stories and understanding what might have happened long ago, stories of an indigenous people on the banks of a river or an ancient Egyptian ruler who built pyramids? What can we learn from these stone foundations of ancient tombs, cities, coins, sculptures, clay bowls, stone arrows, an 18th century butter churn, maybe a 19th century horseshoe grown into a tree, or eventually a plastic square once known as an eight track tape. So, so much and not nearly enough. Each discovery brings with its stories, affirms some ancient ones, disproves or reshapes others. Archaeology discovery adds to the mystery and brings with it as many questions as it provides answers. To me, all of that is exciting. 
gradually adding more accurate lines on an old map, changing the shape of the continent now we know with more space beyond. So this little side trip down memory lane for me is just another way to say thank you archaeologists for all the work you do, for the study you undertake, and the sharing of your work in this forum. Now I'd like to turn over the time to Dr. Kent Bramlett. Thank you.